What do you all, Matt, here with Adam Gorney for a special edition of Tuesdays with Gorney. I am the with Gorney this week as we talk about breaking news. Adam, Matt Wells fired at Texas Tech uh, just after two and a half seasons. Did the news surprise you? Kind of happen quickly. They were just about to go six and two, it seemed like. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if the ball bounces a different way, if they don't blow that second half lead against Kansas State this past weekend, he probably still has his job. Um, it is a little surprising in the sense that, um, you know, they had a winning record for the first time, you know, if, you know, it didn't look like they were going to finish the season with a winning record, but five and three probably should have been six and two. I think that is what really stuck in the crown. I was talking to some people today and they said, you know, this was not the perfect fit. No one was super excited about the hire to begin with. Um, you know, hiring the Utah state coach is nice, but it's not really a blockbuster hire. And he came in without a ton of equity and really didn't deliver early on four and eight, the first year, then the COVID season, I believe they were four and six, finally turned it, got some wins, you know, won some games, but it wasn't enough. Um, you know, I write about it for Tuesdays with Gorney this week. Like what is the expectation at Texas tech? Um, they have not traditionally been a winning program. Cliff Kingsbury, who has the undefeated Arizona Cardinals now um, had a losing record there. I was surprised to, when I was doing some research on it, they were like in the bottom half of the, of the big 12, every single season Kingsbury was there. They really never even got it really going under him all that much. I think he was 19 and 35 in the big 12 and he probably got extra years just because of who he was and the connections to the program. So, you know, I think it's going to be an interesting job. I think expectations, you, you can win there. Mike Leach proved that over a long period of time that it's possible to win there. But things really have to fall like the right way, not only, you know, on the field, but especially in recruiting. Um, and I think we could talk about that a little bit here as I ramble. Yeah, the there's a problem. Like, First of all, you got to recruit a quarterback, okay? Like, yeah. you, you, you 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 bring Columbia with you from Utah State, and that's fine. You, hey, look, he's almost like an extra coach, you know, to bring things over. Then you kind of yank him in and out. Then you run off the quarterback you have. Then you uh, you go get Tyler Shug from Oregon. Then he's kind of yo-yoing around. It's like they did sign Baron Morton, who I thought was a really good quarterback. I almost yep. think he could have bought himself more time if he just said, hey, look, let's – Let's, we're going to start Morton this year. We're not going to bring in a transfer. Instead, it was just like so much going on. You just got to – to me, I, I don't know what the expectations are. And I saw some people say, you guys don't know what's going on at Texas Tech. No, I don't know what's going on at Texas Tech. Yeah. <laughs> Wish I yeah. did. Two and a half years just to me – and like you said, you look at the schedule. They might lose every game they have left, so maybe they wanted to make the change before that happened. But I just don't – I don't know how you build a program by making a change two and a half years in. We've seen it at Florida State and a few other places, Tennessee. It's really hard to, to once you start cycling through coaches, to get off that hamster wheel. Yeah, absolutely. And so I think that's, that's fair. When Willie Taggart got about the same amount of time, it just felt different. Like the program was completely not going anywhere and going maybe in the wrong direction in a lot of ways. Um, but but like you said, he had two of his own recruiting classes. It's not like he stepped into a lot of talent. And the problem here is, as I look through the recruiting numbers, um, you know, they're getting like one or two four stars a year. And, you know, whatever, we want to talk about recruiting rankings or whatever. But, you know, Oklahoma and Texas are getting five stars um, and four stars, all, their entire class. And, and that's reflective on the field when they're playing Texas Tech. And the state is loaded with talent, but the problem is, is Lubbock is essentially like recruiting to Hawaii in many ways. It's so far from everything, like five hours from Dallas. Like it's so far that it's like all the other schools in the conference are almost closer. So you can't go west because New Mexico doesn't have anything and getting into Arizona is Pac-12 region. You can't really go straight south because there's nothing there. North is nothing. So you have to kind of go east and convince players to come in. So I think that was part of Matt Wells' problem. In, 20, in his second class, he had uh, the number 47 class in the country right around Ole Miss and Indiana. 
And look at what those teams have done. I mean, both of those teams have made impacts on the national landscape over the last year. Indiana's a little disappointing this year, but look at them last year. Ole Miss, obviously one of the one of the better teams in the country. And so, you know, like you said too, you need to give guys, you need to give coaches time. Um, you know, you you kind of balance this. Is it one, we made the wrong hire, just cut bait now, get it over with and move on? Or is it we need to give this guy four years at a minimum to get his own people and his own recruits in there that can do something and then make decisions after that. So they decided on the first one. Um, and, and now the question becomes, who do you go get? I think Jeff Trailer at UTSA is option number one. That's nice. I mean, he has an undefeated team at UTSA. Um, he also has an, a veteran quarterback and an outstanding running back. And you know, he's not playing Oklahoma and Kansas State and West Virginia, Oklahoma State. That's that's a nice hire. We'll see if it works out, if, if that's the guy that they want and they can get. Um, but other teams in the Big 12 have figured this out. Stillwater, uh, Oklahoma is not exactly, you know, the paradise of college football <laughs> recruiting. Ames, Iowa. Um, you know, both teams are top. We're, you know, that was a phenomenal college football game this past weekend. And they're fine. They're figuring out ways to get guys. There are definitely small, out of the way college towns that have been able to recruit or put in a system that works. I mean, Mike Gundy ten years ago was trying to score seventy points, and he's changed completely. And now it's working for him in another way. So, you know, it's not it's not an impossible job. It just has to be like everything has to fall into place for it to work. Uh, what would you, what would you think if they just went and hired Graham Harrell and just said, "Look, we're going yeah. back to the straight uh, offense that we were known for." I know it's kind of just like hiring Kingsbury, but guess what? Who cares? I mean, yeah. Look, at least we can have fun. I mean, that would to me, to, to me, that's what I would do. I, I know you'd say, Woody, that didn't work with Kingsbury, who's obviously a good coach in the NFL, but. I mean, Jeff Trailer is a good coach. He's he turned around UTSA really quickly. Uh, he all, he was part of the disaster at Arkansas, which uh, you know, which was which was kind of odd if you look back at it. But you know, there's not a ton of talent at UTSA either. He's brought in some transfers, and then San Antonio is not an area where you're pulling a ton of talent from. So I guess you could compare a little bit. But as they always tell us in San Antonio, it's the fifth biggest city in the world, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it gets bigger and bigger every year. We're there. <laughs> every time we're there. But, but uh, yeah, the thing that's interesting, and I think you know Graham Harrell is going to be in, in in a position to get the Washington State job, I think, if he wants it. But Texas Tech is definitely interesting, and you know Mike Leach did win that way. You know Kingsbury might not have, and the new coach is also going to have the luxury in a few years of not having to face Texas and Oklahoma every year as they go to the SEC, and we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, I mean, what, you know, you could lose games twenty five twenty four. Or you can try to win them, you know, sixty to fifty-eight. You know, it's just kind of the decision that you want to that you want to make. So, um, but but like I said, like that kind of offense, um, bringing that in will at least attract a certain type of player, whether it's through the transfer portal, junior college, or high school. Where, you know, if you're going to Lubbock to run the ball and pound the rock and do the things. That's that's a hard sell. But if you can get, you know, five wide and throw it all around and get a quarterback in there that wants to put up numbers, um, you know, for a while, Leach actually, you know, he looks like a football god now because he actually did that at Washington State, which is, you know, arguably as difficult, if not more difficult to recruit to because you don't even have a state full of players that you can pick from. You have nothing up there, nothing at all. So, you know, he did that for a long time. He got transfer quarterbacks in there. He, he he let them throw every single down, and if you were going to win 55-50 or lose 55-50, at least you were having fun, and people would come up to, to watch the game. And at Texas Tech, they could throw tortillas on the field. So, uh, you know, I think that's going to be an interesting kind of thing that you know the you know the decision makers are going to have to make. Do we want to go back and try to run the ball and pound it and sincere McCormick and Frank Harris and do that kind of thing like Jeff Trailer has done at UTSA? Do we want to bring in a Graham Harrell type that's going to aerate it and try to bring back kind of that fun and gun stuff? Yeah, you you slandered so many cities across the college football world on this podcast. I'd like to remove myself from all those. I also wouldn't think it's like, hey, look at 
look at somebody like Rich Rod. Let's bring him back in the mix. You know, like uh, I can't remember. I know he had some personal issues at Arizona, so I don't know if he would pass the uh, background check on that. But I mean, look, you got to get creative, in my opinion. I'm getting creative on this if I'm if I'm Texas Tech because guess what? The Big Twelve is going to be up for grabs in a couple of years. I mean, yeah. th- th- this is not. There's no like perennial power the teams that coming are coming in are going to have to have time to catch up uh the teams that are leaving are obviously the two big dogs so you know you've got to make the right hire here because it could be setting you up three or four years from now to potentially win the conference and if the playoff expands you never know what could happen so all right gorney well thanks for hanging out with me on your own show (laughs) (laughs) my pleasure reminder to subscribe to the show on uh, spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere else or on the Rivals YouTube at youtube.com slash Rivals Features. All right, thanks, Morning. See ya.